Hey guys, today I'm doing a video on spring and summer fashion trends for 2011. This is a video that I like to do pretty consistently every six months or so. However, I did forget last season I didn't do one. So I didn't do a fall winter one for 2010. I don't know, I just completely forgot to do it and things were a little crazy. So I do apologize for that, but um, I will try and be more consistent this time. Also, please keep in mind, as always, that with any fashion trends, you can take them or leave them. You don't need to follow fashion trends if you don't want to. I have to for my job, and personally, I like to. I think it's fun to, you know, see what's in and what's made a comeback and what to expect for next season. And I just, it's like a hobby of mine. So my advice to you guys is just to do what I do. I pick trends that I like and then I just disregard the rest because remember that not every fashion trend is gonna work for you. Not every fashion trend will work for your body shape or your coloring if it's like a specific color that's in. The first trend that I am so excited about has to be late 1950s and early 60s style. Really feminine shapes and specifically the A-line skirt. And this is a knee length skirt, but the style that was actually seen a lot on the runways was the midi length. And midi length is a skirt or pair of pants that cuts you at your calf. This trend would definitely not work on somebody who is self-conscious about their calves. People who are pear shaped and maybe more self-conscious about their lower body would probably look better in a knee length skirt instead. But definitely if you're not self-conscious about your calves or your legs, then go for the midi length because it is really feminine. It's neither long nor short. It's kind of like in between. Something that's related to that that's also in are capri pants. And capri pants, again, are the same thing. They just hit you right at your calf. The same thing again. They look good on people who have slimmer legs than people who have thicker legs. So just keep that in mind. This dress is a perfect example of something that is early 1960s, late 1950s, it's got the full skirt and the A-line skirt and then a cinched in waist and a high neck. If you think of the show Mad Men, then you'll know what I'm talking about. It's the full skirts, the really feminine look, like Brigitte Bardot, kind of Audrey Hepburn. A pretty controversial trend, which is really hot for next season and I'm loving personally, but I know that a lot of people don't like these, are kitten heels. The little heel, really tiny. Whether you like them or not, if you don't like them, then just leave them behind. But if you do, then you'll be happy to know that kitten heels are in. Another shoe style that is really in again and making a comeback from last spring and summer are clogs. I hate clogs, I just can't stand them, but I know some people do like them. And that kind of ties in with the 70s look, which is also in for next season. The 70s glamour style is really in. That's actually probably the key look and the key trend for spring and summer. It's a trend that I'm not a huge fan of, but I do think that it looks good on some people, specifically really tall people. Bell bottoms are in, which I don't have a pair to show you guys, but basically if you don't know, bell bottoms are just flare jeans or pants that just have a huge flare at the end of them. More specifically, high-waisted pants with a bell bottom or a flare. These aren't the right style, these are actually harem pants, but this is like a high waist, and it just comes up to like your belly button or a little bit above your belly button. I think what looks really good with that is paired up with a silk shirt tucked in, and then a fedora hat, and maybe like a little waistcoat. That's the kind of thing that I'm talking about. For shoes, you could pair it with like a wedge heel or clogs, if you really like clogs, which I just, hate. But if that's your style, then, you know, go with that. Another trend that was really key for spring and summer are tassels. This is my ASOS bag that I've shown before and you guys probably all have seen it before, but this is the only thing in my wardrobe that I could find with tassels on. It doesn't have to be on a bag, it can be on a belt, a cardigan, a skirt, anything. And it kind of ties in a little bit with the 70s glamour feel. Something that is making a comeback from last spring and summer are jumpers and jumpsuits. This is a little jumper. These are really cute to wear when you don't really know what to wear and you kind of are trying to figure out like what to wear to a party and you're not sure if it's casual or more dressy. A jumpsuit is kind of that in-between look. So it could be dressy and dressed up with accessories or you can dress it down with like flats or something like that. 
Crochet and lace are also really big for spring and summer. This is just a crochet detailing top that I got. I can't even remember where. But anything with like a little bit of crochet or lace on it is really on trend. This is something again that kind of ties in with the 70s glamour look. So if you like that style, then go for it. Last but not least, the biker trend is really hot for next season. So if you have a little cropped jacket like this one, this is just a cropped faux leather jacket that I got in H&M. And if you could pair this over like a tank top or a party dress or anything like that for spring and summer, I think it would look really cute. So those were my spring summer fashion trends for 2011. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was helpful for you guys. Don't forget to check out my blog for pictures of everything that I mentioned and I will talk to you all again soon. Bye.